The Chiefs return to Arrowhead for week five and the opponents are carrying some grudges. Let's talk about the game plan for the Chiefs versus the Colts. Welcome back to RGR Football. I'm Ryan, and this is me going rogue on the NFL and the Kansas City Chiefs. Hope you guys liked the film room, the other video from Wednesday. I'm going to put a lot of effort into that one, kind of got deeper in the details. Let me know if you dug that one, and also stay tuned because I got something extra for you coming tomorrow. Now, if you're not uh, a regular around here, if you are, thank you very much. Uh, we, we have a great community on this channel, and I'm really proud of what we've built so far. If you're new, hit the sub, hit the notification bell, and the drop down if you're on mobile, so that you find out when I put something new up. Make sure that if you like this video, hit the thumbs up, as well as any of the others, and leave your comment down below, most importantly, so that you can get in on the conversation. Now, as the Chiefs come back to Arrowhead, coming off of a, I don't want to say frustrating loss, but something that didn't quite look like them, they have to kind of regroup, especially on the offensive side. And if I know anything about this particular group and this particular leader in number 15, that's exactly what they're going to do. Get everything kind of straightened back out, be in front of the home crowd, and get back on track from where we saw them in the first few weeks. Now, it showed a lot of spine to come back, keep grinding through, and get that win in Detroit. It's also going to be on display now. Keep grinding, keep exploring, keep exploiting defenses. Score as many points as possible. And I think you're going to see this team really come out and have a point to prove. And I'm going to start talking about that leader, Patrick Mahomes, PM15, because he's got kind of a job in front of him. Now, this is a Colts team that's come a long way. They were a playoff team last year. And old friend Chris Ballard has continued to build them into a solid roster. There's a number of aspects that really go into how that team's put together. I think as anybody who's ever followed the Chiefs and has had Chris Ballard in the building before should be proud of the job that he's done in Indianapolis. There's a lot of similarities there to what we've seen, the, the growth and development of the Chiefs as well. One thing that they are predicated on is they try to get a good pass rush. And I think what you're going to see, especially early in the game, is that Patrick Mahomes can get into a rhythm, get the ball out quickly. Uh, you're going to hear later from Justin Houston himself just about what that does to the defense and what it's done for him, against him specifically, so far this season. And I think at least early on, there's going to be deep strikes. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't worry. I, they're still looking for the home runs. But I think especially early, you'll want to get into that rhythm, kind of shake off last week. And particularly, I know that Andy Reid is specifically looking at getting that first quarter scoring started a lot earlier not waiting to the second quarter. I think that's going to be really important. That said, between injuries at two depths of the Colts defense, at both the linebacker and the safety level, I think that's really where you got to focus. Towards the middle, and honestly, starting underneath and then working out. What I foresee is the best way to go is some underneath routes. Those low crossers, much like you saw from Dion Yelder, attacking just behind the linebacker level. Uh, Darius Leonard's a great player against the run. He looks like he's going to be healthy, but he's not that great against the pass. So I think not only Travis Kelsey, uh, and maybe even Yelder as well, but when you get beyond that, use the low crossers to pull down the safeties, get that a little bit tightened up, and then you can exploit over the top of them. A lot of play action is what I would be doing, especially come the second quarter, third quarter. After you've developed that, let's get these low things across the middle. Travis Kelsey, and I think the other guy that can take extreme advantage of it, attacking the middle at, at various depths, is Mecole Hardman. I like his chances this week. I think that this could be a very big game for him. Uh, the matchup I really love, and it's just about... Are they coordinated enough? Are they on the same page? Are they making the same sight adjustments so that when the ball is snapped, Pat knows where he's going, and so does Meikle Hardman? That's going to be the key. But I can see, even without blown coverages, and we have seen a lot of those against these Chiefs so far this season, even without blown coverages, I really feel like Meikle Hardman is in a position to exploit this Colts defense deep while Travis Kelsey works the underneath. And I do expect Travis Kelsey to be doubled like we saw against the Lions. So that is, again, going to take another defender away from trying to stop Meikle Hardman. The Colts play a lot of zone, 
And I think Mikko's developing where he needs to be for Pat to deliver zone breakers. Now, they can jump into man. I don't think that's the best thing because I don't think that they have the speed to keep up definitely with Mikko. And now that Tyree Kill is practicing, that's going to be an even taller order. So, those are the two guys that I would focus on. Let's see what Pat Mahomes does. Now, the Colts are a team that want to try to run, and that's okay. Let them try and do that. I, I think that they're in a good position, the Chiefs are, to penetrate and disrupt some of those running lanes. Uh, not sure about Mac's health overall, so that's also a factor. But I will say one cautionary point is to watch when Ryan Kelly, their center, gets out in space and, and leads the line of scrimmage. He's a very good athlete, was very good, highly rated in the athletic matrix coming out of college. Um, so keep an eye on him when you see him break the pocket and actually turn and pull, I think that's going to be a significant aspect of that game. Now, when Jacoby Brissett inherited this team from the shocking retirement of Andrew Luck, I think everyone was a little bit cautious. And that's okay. But they brought him in for a reason because they felt like, and especially given the last couple of years with the injuries Andrew Luck has, has gone through and the time that he's missed, they felt very comfortable with Jacoby Brissett. And I think they should. I think he's a quality quarterback. I think he's a starting level quarterback in this league. And I think he's still working into his own rhythm. Brissett has one ace target in T.Y. Hilton, who's been a little banged up. But he drastically takes over the target share, at least amongst the wide receivers, uh, versus the other wide receivers on this group. He is definitely the guy to focus on. He has the speed. You know they're going to line him up in multitude of positions. So I, I expect the Chiefs to try and vary how they attack him. But playing off in zone when he's in the slot and getting up on him when he's on the line of scrimmage, I think is going to be important in both ways. And beyond him, the next receiver that I think is in most position to do damage against uh, this Chiefs secondary is Paris Campbell. But we don't think that he's going to be available at this point. I, I think they're going to be safe there. So they're going to be able to focus, and they're going to be able to give some safety attention to T.Y. Hilton, and I think that's a good mixture. The thing that they have to be very protective of is the linebacker level, especially in the nickel. Uh, when they run in 11 personnel, uh, you're going to see some 12 personnel out of these Colts as well because Jack Doyle plays a ton of snaps. Eric Ebron plays a good amount of snaps, although, amazingly, Doyle plays more, uh, at least so far this season. And so I think you're going to see that more often. That might leave uh, Spags to leave three linebackers on, on the field, and that's going to be okay. But they're going to be attacking the Chiefs linebackers. And these tight ends are very good. Um, despite the, the hit by Burfick, I, I think Doyle's just fine. I think he's going to be able to be performing. And that's going to be a matchup that these Colts are going to look to exploit. Uh, Wilson's been good in coverage. Hitch has been pretty solid. Lee's still struggling a little bit, and I expect that middle area – and with these tight ends to be a focus point for what the Colts are trying to do. So you can combat that by either manning up a little bit more and disrupting at the line of scrimmage, especially the tight end routes. Or you have to mix up your coverages in zone. And that may be sometimes Tyron Matthew coming down and switching out. It may be just a crisscross of where you line up which linebacker uh, in order to not give that away and give them the matchup that they're looking for. Rushing the passer. It's got to be key this week. Disrupting Brissett is generally effective, maybe more so than other quarterbacks in this league. And I'll be very interested to see what Frank Wright comes up with because I think he knows this too. But rushing the passer is going to be key. And when you have Frank Clark and Chris Jones out there, they have two of the prime matchups. They are the two best Frontline defenders for the Chiefs, and they're going against the two best offensive linemen for the Colts. Anthony Costanzo is a very solid tackle. He's had some ups and downs, but he and Frank Clark are going to do battle this week. And I'm going to be very interested to see if this is, especially after Frank's social media uh, talk about his performance last week, if this is something that Frank steps up into and is able to take advantage of. And I think the slugfest is going to be <laughs> Quentin Nelson versus Chris Jones is going to be epic. I think they might actually move Chris Jones around a little bit to try and break that matchup up some. But if they don't, expect double teams. Expect a little bit of help on the outside, some chips for Costanzo against Clark. And what that shadow brings down the rest of the line is that the other side of the Colts offensive line, the right-hand side with Braden Smith uh, in particular, is going to let Agba, Okafor, uh, maybe even Naughty if he can spring in. We saw his best penetrating performance last year against the Colts. Let's see what he does this time. But 
the left-hand side of the Chiefs defense is primed to go against the weaker part of the Colts offensive line. And I think that's a great matchup to exploit. Now, I want to come back to Justin Houston because I'm sure he has a grudge that he wants to take care of. Uh, I think he's got an excellent matchup over against Cam Irving, and I think they're going to exploit that. And yes, he still lines up predominantly on the left-hand side of their defense. But in the last two weeks, he's played a total of 15 snaps on the right-hand side. Knowing that he has Cam Irving over there, I think that what the Colts are going to try to do is move him over to the right-hand side. Let him work against Cam rather than going up against Schwartz. Uh, he knows these guys very well, so I think that's the matchup he's going to prefer as well. At the end, what that matchup with Justin Houston does is kind of set him up to be the pinnacle of, of what they're trying to do with their front seven. Let's see what Justin Houston thinks about it. You're as familiar with the Chiefs as anybody. How much are they p picking your brain this week about their personnel and the things that they like to do and just how well this team plays as a unit? Uh, well, they, they ask questions. Uh, they definitely got a different unit over there, not a, a lot of the same guys that was normally there. Offense has switched up, so it's, it's kind of new to us. But the defense definitely been asking me a lot of questions about the guys. And what have you been telling them? Wherever I know, anything that can help get them an edge that I know about the guys. You were going up against Patrick Mahomes every day in practice. What makes him just so unique? Y'all see what I see. He just he put it on TV now, so he's a special guy. He's one of the kind, one of a kind. So he's Pat Mahomes. So the throws he make, he, he can make every throw. He can see everything. He got eyes in the back of his head. He's a great quarterback. What are the things though that he does maybe that we don't see on the field that he does maybe behind the scenes that make him that good? The work he put into uh, preparing for a game. I know he's one of the first guys there and one of the last guys to leave. So he definitely prepared himself as a true veteran quarterback should. So he put the work in to be who he is. How much do you think about going back to Kansas City this weekend, just your return? Uh, I'm trying not to think about it. I don't want it to get in the way of what I got to do. I'm going there to play a game and not really worry about my past. You guys, um, when you look, you look at the pass rush, you guys had eight sacks in the first two games, only two, two sacks, or actually one sack the last two games. What, what has been the biggest difference? I think the quarterback made adjustments in getting rid of the ball. Uh, the past two games, the t quarterback hasn't been holding the ball. So you need time to get there, and he's been getting rid of the ball fast, yeah. both quarterbacks. And then when you face a guy like Patrick in an offense like that, what is the challenge in getting to him to try to disrupt his timing? Uh, it's a big challenge. You know, he one of the least sacked quarterbacks in the game, so that's, we got a tough task this week. We just got to keep coming no matter what the situation is. We know they're going to throw the ball. They love throwing the ball. So the, regardless of our, of our situation, if we get there or not, we just stay, continue to stay a rush. Justin, you said you try not to think about going back to Kansas City, but it's natural. I mean, how are you winning that battle to not worry about it or think about it? Just treat it like every other game. Just, just focus on what I got to do and focus on me and not them. Will memories come flooding back when you get out there, though? And it's... I'm pretty sure they will. I, I was there eight years, so I'm... I'm human. I know some type of memory is going to come back to my mind when I step back on that field. So we'll see. Justin, do they also have the same tendency as you saw maybe against Oakland as quick releases, get, getting the ball out quickly? Is that something you've seen on tape from them? Well, they throw the ball a whole lot more than Oakland did. So they, are, they got times where they get rid of it quick and they got times they hold. So hopefully when, when they hold the ball, we can make them, we can punish them for it. Sunday's game is well behind you guys, but how crucial is it against a team like Kansas City to avoid letting them mount that 14 nothing lead? Oh, it's very important. It, not just them against any team in the league. So you never want to get behind and put uh, change up the game plan. We want to always want to stay ahead. And as a pass rusher, I would love to be ahead come fourth quarter so I can just pin my ears back and rest. Will, will it ch change anything in the pre in the pregame where you got you're gonna have a ton of people coming over to say hi, that kind of thing? I really don't. Go, I don't go out for pregame. I always warm up in the locker room, so nothing would change for me. You've been talking to a lot of. Old friends back there this week, you're kind of keeping yourself. I'm standing myself. Really, uh, like I said, a lot of defensive guys that I was there with, they're gone. So most of the people I, was, I play with, they're not even there no more. So it's a bunch of new faces over there. And that's the game plan for me. That's what I see being a good way to attack this Colts defense and defend what they're trying to do. Let me know what you think. What do you want to see happen? It's going to be an up and down battle and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing just how Arrowhead reacts as well. So let me know what you think. You leave your comments below. If you like this one, hit the thumbs up, hit the sub and the notifications if you're new around here. I appreciate all your time. We'll be back post game with the live stream. Uh, thanks for checking these out and I'll talk to you next time.